Okay, welcome everybody to the Gansa Bridge series audio commentary. Uh, so this beginning stuff here, I had a really tough time deciding what to include and what to cut because the manga just starts right in the subway. All this stuff before is just filler for the anime. And I think it's good filler because it establishes Korono's character and shows how alienated and misanthropic he is, which shows us how out of character it is for him when he saves the bum. So I wanted to keep that, but it was it was tough deciding which scenes would best establish that. And uh, here we have, of course, the introduction of the quadruple A, which uh, I knew was going to be a very practical uh, running gag to have, because Gantz does have so much nudity, which, left as is, would get the videos taken down off of YouTube very quickly, so I needed to have an out, you know, a, a reason to censor that. So I thought that worked. And oh god! Look at this! Look what Kaiser did for me! Kick so much ass. I gave him a, a short list of three songs. It was either this, uh, the ACDC Big Balls, which I used as the ending song, or the Snakes on a Plane theme. And I sent him some footage and told him to go nuts. And literally like four hours later, he sends this masterpiece back to me. I may very well be biased, but I think that's still my favorite abridged intro of all time in anything. There are others that come close, but I think that one's still my favorite. <laughs> so, um, so like I said, this is where the the um, manga starts, and that that old lady shows up a bunch of times in the anime. This is her only canon appearance, but she's a recurring character in the anime. But I cut out all the rest of her scenes because I. Yeah, that whole deal was weird. That that was something that got added to the anime that wasn't really necessary. That whole one, two, three, four, five, six, sex thing I thought was kind of like lowbrow and weird, but people seem to like it, so that's cool. Now this <laughs> scene, I found myself in the very strange position of actually editing it such as to remove some of the gay overtones as opposed to emphasizing them, because it would have been so easy to make a gay joke right there. Because, I, I mean, Kurono's eyes literally just crawl over Kato's body. <laughs> but uh, I covered that same ground so thoroughly in Berserk that making that one of the very first jokes in this series, I think, would have been just... It would have been a little like, oh, look what HBI 2K is doing again. So I, I really wanted to set this one apart a little bit. Uh, now, if you if you listen to Kurono's voice in this uh, episode... It's way different from his voice in the rest of the series, even as early as, as the second episode, it changes. Because uh, I had originally conceived it as being uh, just my voice only pissed off all the time. But starting in the second episode, I started to get that that kind of, you know, it's, it's almost a little squeaky and whiny. And he's just so exasperated all the time. And I, I think that was a real improvement. I, I thought about doing it that way from the start, and when I originally tried it, it came out like too whiny and kind of annoying, and I didn't want my main character's voice to be really a pain to listen to. But uh, it sort of just crept back in there as I kept going. And there we have Joe Salaryman, who again was just one of those last minute, like, oh god, what am I going to do with this guy? He doesn't look like anything. He's just... I thought about doing a joke, because in the, in the manga he's specifically stated to be a teacher, and I couldn't think of anything to do with that. It's like, eh, he just looks like a salaryman. That'll be his name, Joe Salaryman. His his voice, as I mentioned in an interview, is uh, vaguely, loosely based on a bit character from Invader Zim. But I never really thought of him as being like this big character who would show up a lot. Actually, I had a lot more fun with the Yakuza. Um, and I envisioned Joe just as kind of a foil for them, and I figured, you know, they both die around the same time, and that would be it. If anything, I thought maybe I'd bring the Yakuza guys back if I could. Oh god, look at that ugly up and down thing. God, I had such a... It was such an adjustment getting used to the editing in Gantz because the camera is always moving um, as opposed to Berserk where it's very static and made it very easy editing-wise. Um, so I occasionally had to resort to really awkward devices like that bit where the camera goes up and then down and just loops going up and down. I hated that shit. Tried to avoid it whenever I could, but sometimes I just, just couldn't. 
and the amazing, wonderful introduction of Kishimoto here. Uh, you know, there actually was another Gans abridged before mine, which I hadn't heard of until I was, I don't know, 10, 13 episodes into this. Only lasted two episodes, but I found it kind of funny that that guy did pretty much the same thing with Kishimoto's introduction that I did and set it to a song about girls. <laughs> Different song, not Cherry Pie, but I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, in a minute here we have uh, the Rickroll song showing up, which, uh, for those who know, Gantz always plays a jingle every time it opens up at some point before they get transferred out of the room. I put some thought into what I wanted that jingle to be in the abridged version, and ultimately I felt bad that I'd missed out on that whole April Fool's deal where everybody was Rickrolling everybody, and that was so awesome. So this was kind of my, like, belated entry into the whole Rickroll fad. I was kind of afraid that it would get old before I got all the way through Gantz, but I I think it pretty much stayed <laughs> stayed fresh for for that uh, duration. And then you know the Gantz voice here, I I also put a lot of thought because I knew that I wanted Gantz to be a more active character in the abridged version than he was in the original. Um, in the original, he only ever communicated through uh, text showing up on the ball. And so I was originally going to just, you know, edit my own text onto the ball there, but couldn't figure out a way to do it that didn't look really awkward and, and you know, obviously copy-pasted onto there, uh, especially if the camera was moving. So eventually hit on the, the text-to-speech voice for him, uh, which, which worked out amazingly well. I was really worried that, uh, you know, since I couldn't have him emote at all, it would be really tough, but... but that I I really really was happy with how that turned out. All right, I'm rambling. See you next time.